away from kickoff and usually we go to Monday morning headlines here presented by Chevy but the major headline all week has been the Patriots videotaping controversy on Thursday NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell punished the Patriots finding Bill Belichick $500,000 the Patriots franchise an additional quarter million and stripping New England of a 2008 draft pick in all likelihood a first rounder we're joined now by Commissioner Roger Goodell in the studio the Patriots, assuming they make the playoffs, are docked the first-round pick. They have two first-rounders, their own and San Francisco's. This isn't clear yet. Which one will you take away, the earlier one or the later one? It's their first-round draft pick. Uh, and I should note that the importance of a first-round draft choice, whether they have two or not, the loss of a first-round draft choice is, is very impactful on a franchise. So they figure to finish higher up in the standings than the Niners, so it would be the second of those two picks in that scenario. Well, I don't know how we're going to come out of this season, but uh, it's contemplated that if they don't make the playoffs, then we would take a second and third round draft choice. There's general agreement that losing the draft choice is more significant competitively than a suspension of the coach, but it wasn't an either or. You could have suspended him. In addition, earlier on this program, Chris Collinsworth said suspend him for the December 16th rematch against the Jets and for the first playoff game if the Pats make it. Well, I don't agree with that, and I respect Chris a great deal, but I don't think that's appropriate here. Uh, what my job here, Bob, is to make sure that all 32 teams are operating within the same rules on a level playing field. And that's what I've tried to do here with this penalty, is to make sure that all teams are playing by the same rules. There is no question in my mind that the draft choice and the first round draft choice, which is unprecedented, we've never taken a first round draft choice in a disciplined matter, is in terribly impactful to a franchise and will send a message to all 32 clubs that you are going to play by the rules. And I think that's the important message here. It is also a significant penalty to the franchise and to Bill Belichick. And I also issued an unprecedented level of fine against Bill Belichick and a $250,000 fine against the club. You were widely praised for the crackdown on some players who had misbehaved, Pac-Man Jones, Michael Vick, whomever. Now there's some sentiment that you went easier on an authority figure, a coach, than you had on the players. Even though the situations are not exactly the same, some who praised you in the first case are critical of you now. I understand this job is going to come with criticism, Bob. I heard you earlier in the week and Peter King earlier in the week talking about a second round draft choice would be an extremely strong statement. I understand that. Uh, and people are going to have difference of opinions. I listened today and I heard a lot of people who thought it was too strong. That's part of my job. But what I have to do is make sure that I maintain the integrity of the NFL. And allowing each team to be on the field playing within the same rules is a critical point for me. Wade Wilson, the quarterback coach of the Cowboys, received a shipment of HGH. He suspended him five games, fined him hundred grand, which is a third of his salary. Half a million, we guess, is about a tenth of Belichick's salary. Wilson, who is no longer a player, says he received it to help him cope with the effects of diabetes. Is that a disproportionate penalty? Assistant that, coach for HGH as against Belichick with a competitive advantage? Well, first of all, I'm not going to get into the personal situations of why Wade was taking it, but that's not an accurate point. Uh, second of all, uh, Wade Wilson was involved in a criminal activity. It was against the law. And it is a very clear policy for our clubs, for our players, that if you violate that, it's a four-game suspension. I suspended him for five games. We had a player who was also suspended at the same time because I believe a coach should be held to a higher standard. And that is why I approach it that way. They all understand the rules, and I think we did what was appropriate in Wade Wilson's case, and I'm comfortable with that. Belichick hasn't said much, but he did say that he had a different interpretation of the rules than did the league. How would it have been possible for him to misinterpret the league's intent here? Well, I think Bill should speak for himself. I don't agree with his interpretation. Uh, I think uh, we are sending him a very strong message that we don't agree with it. Uh, and as I say, uh, he is uh, facing a, a tremendous amount of public scrutiny, uh, criticism publicly, uh, and I think it's warranted based on uh, the, uh, the evaluation he made of the Constitution bylaws. Andrea Kramer reports that the Jets may ask for an investigation about the Pats illegally miking defensive linemen to pick up line calls and quarterback audibles. Is there more here that you're investigating concerning the Pats or maybe other clubs? We are going to be monitoring all 32 clubs, the Patriots included. Uh, we have heard a lot of rumors about certain things that have been done, uh, either with audio, uh, with quarterback to coach communication. Uh, and we want to make sure that they're all playing by the same rules. So we will monitor all 32, 
And that's part of why the message was so strong here and unprecedented. A first round draft choice is not something clubs are going to take a chance on. This is supposed to deter people behaving this way. And I'm confident that it's going to be the case. Given all the advances in modern technology, is right. this a high tech version of what you face and all leagues face with performance enhancing drugs where try as you might, the cheaters seem to stay ahead of the police and all these new devices come along and try as you might, you have to wonder how you're going to thwart them all. Well, this wasn't I mean, really there are binoculars high now with, with, <laughs> with taping and uh, You're right, but this them. wasn't really high technology. This was a videotape camera on the sideline. Uh, but we think we can use technology for us to be able to monitor some of the things that go on in our stadiums. But if the consequences are great, the clubs won't do it. And that is why we are trying to be very firm here, very strong. Do not do this or you will suffer the consequences and your, your franchise will. This is a team violation here. After the offseason that you had, this happens in week one. It's clear that you want to deal with it, put it behind you, and move on to the games. On the other hand, is there an argument to be made that maybe you should have waited? Maybe there is more information here that has to be gathered, and you could have held your penalty off for a while. I certainly understand that comment, but I don't think it is because, again, I'm trying to make sure that our games are played within the same rules. I want it going into this weekend, all 32 teams to know the consequences are severe if you don't follow the rules and you don't play fairly. And that's why I wanted to make my ruling now to make sure they understood that. I still reserve my right, and I have notified the Patriots of that, that if there is information that I have not been made aware of or it's inconsistent with what I've been told, I will revisit that case. So you could increase the penalty yes. in that instance? Of course. If I find out new information that's different than what I have, absolutely. Do you have reason to believe that Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, was aware of what was going on here? No, I don't. Robert made it very clear to me, and I believe him, uh, that uh, he was not aware of it. this is something that was happening in the football department, and many people in the football department were involved with it. That's why it's a team-related issue here. Just a few seconds here. The league has asked for the tapes and all the notes that go with them. Right. Realistically, do you expect to get them all? Absolutely. How can you be sure? I am very confident that the Patriots are going to abide by the rules. They understand that the consequences and that I could increase the discipline if I don't get them. Commissioner Goodell, thanks very much for coming in. Good to be with you, Bob. All right. In just a moment, we'll join Al Michaels and John Madden in Foxborough as we move on to the Chargers and the Patriots. By consensus, these are two of the three best teams in the NFL, the defending champion Colts being the other. We'll see you at halftime. The Pats and the Bolts are next. Just a few days away, but it feels like it already is 55 degrees as you look at downtown Boston and now 30 miles south, Foxborough, Massachusetts, Gillette Stadium where San Diego meets New England, and a figurative nor'easter rolled through this area last week. And there was the man at the center of the storm, the coach of the New England Patriots. 
Bill Belichick, he of three Super Bowl titles. Al Michaels, John Madden, and Andrea Kramer, welcome to Foxborough. This is a tremendous matchup. We couldn't wait for this game to be played when we saw the schedule come out. We'll get to the game in a second. But first, Spygate, Videogate, Cameragate, whatever you want to call it. The Patriots last week, Bill Belichick fined a half million dollars. The team fined an additional $250,000. A first round draft choice taken away if they get to the playoffs, all because a camera that was controlled by the Patriots was illegally focused on the New York Jets defensive coaches in a game the Patriots won. John, you are a Hall of Fame coach. Bill Belichick may join you in Canton one day. Why would a coach so brazenly flaunt a very clear rule, and what benefit was he trying to attain? Well, you know, I mean, he shouldn't have done that. It was against the rules. He got caught, and he's paying for it. But every coach in the history of football has been trying to get any competitive advantage that they can get. We've all done that. Now, if you can get the signals, that is a big, big thing. I mean, say, for example, that you can get a defensive signal, base defense, cover two. Now, if you can get that to your quarterback before the ball snap, he not only knows what it is, that it's a cover two, but he also knows what it isn't. If it's a running play, he knows he doesn't have to worry about the eighth man in the box. If it's a passing play, he knows he doesn't have to worry about blitz pass detection. So it is a big, big thing if you do have the defensive signal. Now Roger Goodell said it didn't affect the outcome of the game, but one thing that did affect the outcome of the game last week as we talk about tonight's game is the retooling, the reloading of the Patriots. They went out, they got Randy Moss. They got a Dalis Thomas from Baltimore. Already an elite team. Now they're even better. What would you think of their performance last week? Yeah, and I'm so impressed with Tom Brady every time I see him play. I mean, he just makes everything look easier. But now with Randy Moss, you know, when you look at Randy Moss, you think of two things, speed and going deep. And I'll tell you, that really helps an offense because if you have to worry about that and you always have to keep a guy over the top, you always have to double him, it's going to make things a lot easier for Tom Brady going to other guys. Nine catches against the Jets, including a touchdown. Now San Diego, a tumultuous offseason, 14-2 last year, best record in the league, lose to New England in the playoffs. They get bounced in the first round. Marty Schottenheimer eventually gets fired. The coordinators go to become head coaches with Dallas and with Miami. What about San Diego coming off their 14 3 win over Chicago. You know I think that you know they had some troubles offensively last week and it looked like Philip Rivers was a little nervous a little anxious in the pocket because he didn't get the running game going. So I think if they're going to have success tonight LaDainian Tomlinson has to have a big night and he has I mean historically he has done very well against this defense. He has to do it tonight and make Phillips Rivers jobs a lot easier. The league MVP last year more on San Diego now. Let's go down to Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Hey Al, standing outside the Chargers locker room where North Turner has taken uncharacteristic and extreme precautions due to the events of this week, as well as concerns he has that the Patriots may have illegally obtained opponents' game plans in the past. So instead of giving his players the first 15 scripted plays last night as he normally does, he gave them to them this morning and not in written form. The pregame locker room was sealed off, as he called it. Every piece of written material, the opening script to the game plan sheets, were locked up, and no Patriots locker room attendants were permitted in. Al, this is what Spygate has spawned. And maybe Stephen Stills, when he was still with Buffalo Springfield, understood what would be spawned tonight with the lyrics from 1967. There's something happening here. What it is. Gillette Stadium opened in 2002. Stars out tonight Tomlinson and Brady on Sunday Night Football. 55 degrees as we mentioned at the top. Not quite full foliage though. Leaves are still green. Nope, but I'll tell you this, it's good hitting weather. Have you ever seen anyone more confident than Ladanian Tomlinson was last night? Especially coming off a game in which he only gained 25 yards on 17 carries. I know, but he feels confident against his Patriot team. In fact, he said, if we play these guys 10 times, we beat them nine. Well, we'll get into the storylines. A lot of bad blood at the end of the game last year when Sean Merriman's sack dance was being mocked at the end of the game by, among others, Ellis Hodge. 
who's going to return this kickoff. There is Hobbs, Nate Kading to put it in the air. Last week, the longest kickoff return in the history of the National Football League by Hobbs, 108 yards at the Meadowlands. This one, if he runs it all the way back, would only be 89. He takes it at the 11. The special teams does its work, and New England will go to work at the 31-yard line as we take a look at their offense. Tom Brady, Michigan. Mons Maroney, University of Minnesota. Randy Moss, Rand University. Dante Stallworth, Grant High School, Sacramento, California. Benjamin Watson, University of Georgia. Kyle Brady, Penn State. Matt Light, Purdue University. Logan Mankins, Fresno State. Dan Gilpin, Boston College. Russ Hochstein, Nebraska. Nick Kazer, University of Toledo. And already a change. Hochstein was supposed to start because Steve and Neal is inactive tonight. They inactivated him before the game. But Billy Yates will actually make the start. Number 74 at right guard. And Brady will go to the air right away and pick up nine yards on a pass to the tight end, Benjamin Watson. It'll be second down and one for New England. Matt Wilhelm, one of the inside linebackers in the Charger 3 4, makes the stop. You know, one of the things that Bill Belichick says he doesn't want to do is, is run on first down, run into Jamal Williams, and do those types of things. So he comes out first down, three wide receivers, spread the ball, throw it, throw it to him, and now, now go no huddle. No huddle on second down and one, and the pass is caught. So he goes to Watson again. The Patriots from time to time use no huddle, use it quite frequently, in fact, and start a number of games that way. Wilhelm and Hart in on the tackle first down on the first two plays with the ball out near midfield they'll spot it at the 46 yard line again we're talking about Jamal Williams a big nose tackle for the Chargers really dominates the inside and the running game and so the Patriots say well we'll just throw it if you're going to do that now with four wide out of the shotgun Randy Moss makes his first home catch as a member of this team Quentin Jammer makes the tackle the crowd saluting Randy Moss after his seven seasons at Minnesota and two with Oakland. Again, when you have a Tom Brady, you can do this. I mean, a big part of it is Tom Brady, and a little part of it, or you know, another part of it is the offensive line. It does a great job for Brady. Second down and two against a defense that, that did not yield a touchdown to Chicago last week. Brady swings it to the outside, and that is caught by Moss, who falls out of bounds. Picking up the first down. That 91, by the way, I know a lot of people wonder what that is. That's from Marquise Hill, the former defensive end. He played three years here and was killed in a jet ski accident last Memorial Day. Yeah, watch how much how much room they give Randy Moss out there. That again is what speed does. You know that that the corner is off. He's deep. He doesn't want to get beat deep. He's going to give him room. So the Patriots just take the out in front of him. From the 41, Brady out of the gun. Has to step up. A little contact there, and then the ball comes loose for a moment with Igor Oshansky finally getting to Brady, who was barely touched last week in the game against the Jets. I think when he tried to, to pull that ball back, he just threw it right into the ground. I mean, he gets away so quickly and, and, and gets so much space between he and the offensive line that, that he started to throw that ball and couldn't, so it just went right into the ground. And Oshansky was right on him. Unintended spike. Second down and 10. Kevin Falk is in the backfield. And in his ninth year with his team, drafted in 99. He stays in the block and he lays a great block out, which opens it up for Wes Welker, who came over from Miami. And Wes Welker gets inside the 10. Stephen Cooper came blitzing in and Falk did a tremendous job picking him up, giving Brady the time to set up a first down and goal. Yeah, and that's the thing that Kevin Falk has to do is not only be a pass receiver, but you have to pick up the blitz. And Tom Brady will take that short step, take that short step, and then you think that's what he's going to do, and boom, he goes right up the field on you. He'll always do that when he gets on his side of the 50. First and goal on the opening drive of the game. Brady. Wide open is Benjamin Watson. And it's almost as if the Patriots said, we don't need any cameras. I guarantee you there are none being trained on San Diego's coaches tonight. I'll tell you what, give me Tom Brady and I wouldn't need any cameras <laughs> either. I mean, I mean, he loves his tight end down in this area. You see Benjamin Watson, he's the inside receiver here. 
Then it was slap. He's just running. he's going to run a corner pattern. The outside receivers come to the inside. All the Charger defenders came with him, and Benjamin Watson was wide open in the outside. Steven Gostowski for the extra point. So it's a seven-play drive. Every play was a pass. And the only incomplete pass was when it came out of Brady's hand. Watson for the score, and just like that, seven to nothing New England. Downtown Boston, 30 miles to the south we come. Seven plays, 69 yards. Brady six out of seven. Watson caught three passes on the drive. Now the kickoff will go through the end zone by Steven Gostowski. Here come the San Diego Chargers. Here's the offense. Philip Rivers, NC State. LaDainian Tomlinson, TCU. Vincent Jackson, Northern Colorado. Craig Davis, LSU. Antonio Gates, Detroit Central High School. Brandon Montemayor, Arizona. Marcus McNeil, Auburn. Chris Dillman, Indiana. Nicholas Hardwick, Purdue. Mike Goff, Iowa. Shane Olivier, D. Ohio State University. An offense dominated by LaDainian Tomlinson and Gates as well. The question is how good can the wide receivers be that was the question last year as well but it's a very potent offense obviously they start from the 20 yard line Rivers right to the air on play action and has an intercepted at the 28 yard line by Roosevelt Colvin. So the Patriots with all the tumult over the past week have a perfect first drive and then the first play from Rivers is a pass intended for Buster Davis and busted up by Colvin. You know, Roosevelt Colvin is out here, and you always think that he's going to be a rusher, rusher. So you put a pass protector on him, and that's exactly what Philip Rivers thought. But when you look out there, and if you're Rivers, you have to see that he dropped, and he's just running right to that out. They expected him to rush. He didn't. He dropped, and they threw it right to him. That's the thing about these Bill Belichick defenses. It, you think they're going to do something. You're almost sure they're going to do it. Then they don't. Master of disguise has been for years. Brady starts out of the shotgun here. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Ed Hockley, let's take a look right now at the San Diego defense. Igor Shansky, Oregon. Jamal Williams, Oklahoma State. Luis Castillo, Northwestern. Sean Phillips, Purdue. Stephen Cooper, Maine. Matt Wilhelm, Ohio State. Sean Merriman, Maryland. Quentin Jammer, Texas. Clinton Hart, South Sumter High School. Marlon McCree, Kentucky. Drayton Florence, Tuskegee. Now on first and 15, the pass is through the hands of Kevin Falk. So they try to cash in on the Colvin interception. Colvin intercepted Rivers in that playoff game in San Diego last January. And that's that's the thing about Roosevelt Colvin and and on the other side Mike Vrabel the same thing you know you you think they're linebackers and then they become defensive ends then you think they're defensive ends and pass rushers and they become linebackers and they're very good at both. Second and 15 no huddle out of the shotgun. Four man rush. The line does its job. The catch is made out here by Wes Welker. He gets taken down at the 22 yard line by Drayton Florence. We'll take a peek now at Sean Merriman, one of the best in the league. Well, you know, Sean Merriman is going to get the pressure from, from one side. Sean Phillips on the other side uh, on the other side. But the thing the Chargers aren't getting here is any pressure in the middle. And when you play against a Tom Brady and he's in the shotgun, you better get pressure up there. Brady thinks pressure may be coming from his left. Instead, simply a four-man rush, third and nine. He has time, and the pass is thrown a little behind Walker. So this was key for San Diego after giving up that drive, then the interception, at least holding him to a field goal attempt. And we saw Rosie Colvin drop off, and here we're going to see Sean Merriman. Again, usually a pass rushing linebacker. That time he went off with the with the motion man with Welker and, and he was in pass defense. But if they're going to get if they're going to get pressure on Tom Brady, they're going to have to get it from the outside plus a push up the middle. 41 yard attempt for Gostowski, the backup quarterback Matt Castle to hold it and the kick is no good. Chris Hansen Holt was the holder. Chris Hansen holding because Castle hurt his finger last week. 
So the snap was good. The hole looked like it was good, but the kick wasn't. San Diego dodges a bullet. Or no deal. You see it Wednesday right here on NBC. From the 31, Philip Rivers, who had his first pass intercepted, starts to hand the ball off, and we've got Ed Hockley's crew throwing three flags. I think the right guard, Mike Goff, ball jumped. Offense number 79, five-yard penalty, first down. Jumpy start for San Diego. That's Mike Goff, the right guard. You know, I felt last week in watching the Chargers in the in the first half that they were a little jumpy, that they were tight. They they didn't have any rhythm to their offense at all and kind of carried over into the first half or the first quarter of this game. And yeah, they got lucky last week. Two turnovers made the difference in the game as that Danny and Tomlinson takes it up to the 29. A phenomenal season for Tomlinson last year, shattering a mark that Paul Horning had set for most points in the season, among others, that had lasted for decades, led the league in rushing. Was the MVP and with an injury right now, a stoppage on the field. That's the right tackle that Shane Olivier, who had his problems last week against the Bears, and right now he is down on the turf. And that's the right tackle for San Diego, a problem spot along their interior. Last week, Roman Oban, who normally backs him up, is also down tonight, inactive, and Jerome Clary will be coming in. You're going to see Olivier is number 70 there. Looks like he gets his knees rolled up behind him, but that's not where he gets it. Watch it right here. I mean, he gets his back bent in a way that your back doesn't bend. That's the thing as an offensive lineman you always worry about is. Not stuff in front of you, but stuff rolling up behind you and putting you in that position. Jeremy Clary will come in. Clary is a guy in his first full year now because he was drafted last year but didn't play, and he comes out of Kansas State. So he's the guy along that front that will have to pave the way for. Ladani and Tomlinson. Right, and they kind of like him. I remember when we were there and watched him in training camp, it was either going to be he or Leckerkirker. I just wanted to say Leckerkirker, but, but he beat out Leckerkirker and they cut him, kept Clary. So I think he's going to be the guy that eventually starts at this right tackle position. Anytime you want to say his name, be my guest, John. Rivers. Pump fakes and throws to the outside, and that is incomplete. The coverage is good, and the pass was thrown out of bounds anyway. Intended for their number one draft choice, Craig Buster Davis, covered on the play by the cornerback Randall Gay. You know, that was one of the things that, that North Turner talked about is, is we have to get these other guys involved. You know, it's not all about Ladanian Tomlinson and Antonio Gates. You know, the guys on the outside have to make plays, and he wanted them to make plays early in this game. He wanted to get them into the game early, and that was his try to get it to Buster Davis. Gates split left on third down and 12. Rivers out of the shotgun. Patriots moving around defensively. Rush five. Protection is good. Pass is good, but it's going to be short of a first down, even though Gates is trying to get to that yellow line. He can. He's about two yards shy. So they go to the tight end, who's really more of a wide receiver than a tight end. But it'll be fourth down and two. Yeah, and the and the Patriots came on a blitz here. You'll see they put Gates in motion. They get him in a stack position, and that way you can't get on him or you can't punch him. And he he should have gotten up the field. He gets up the field about three or four more yards, and that ball's completed. He picks up a first down. Mike Cipher is one of the better punters in the league. Sending it down toward Wes Welker. 48 yard kick. And Welker will bring it back to the 25 yard line. The Brady Bunch will go to work there. 9.53 left in the opening quarter. Patriots up 7 0. Well, here's the, the wristband of, of Ted Trell. He's a defensive coordinator. Now, that's one of the ways that they call defenses. He has all his defenses numbered on the wristband. Then he has four of his defensive players that have the same wristband. Here's Maroney up past the 30 to the 32 yard line. 
But you see, you usually have, you know, a couple of your linebackers and your two safeties that will have the wristbands. And you see him there. So, so Ted Cottrell just calls in a number. And they look at the number on the wristband, the corresponding number, and then they call that defense to the players. Now, we're talking about, you know, stealing signals and things that people do. The wristband is one way to get around it. <laughs> it's interesting because it's so low tech. Second and three. And that catch is made for a first down to Wes Welker, who comes out of the slot a lot. Played with Miami last year, can run back punts and kicks and play out of the slot. Had a good week last week and has already caught three balls tonight. Yeah, but you still have to change that up, and they'll they'll even change the wristband. I mean, they'll take it in the you know in the second quarter. They'll put a new wristband in that has new numbers, and then of course sometimes they'll call it without the wristband. So. It's all ways to you know, to signal a defense in, but not let the offense pick it up. From the 43-yard line, Maroney and with Corey Dillon gone, he becomes their number one back. He was drafted in the first round out of Minnesota last year, and they worked him in with Corey Dillon. They had a very effective one-two punch. Dillon. Did a masterful job after coming over from Cincinnati. And now Maroney will take the bulk of the ball carrying with Sammy Morris backing him up. And if you're going to run the ball, you better get that nose tackle block. Watch Jamal Williams. He just takes on the center. The guard tries to cut him. He just runs away from everything straight down the line and meets the ball carrier just about the line of scrimmage. That was one of the things Bill Belichick didn't want to do is run on first down against Jamal Williams. Out of the four wide out set on second down and eight coming back to try to make the catch and make it is Randy Moss. So he ran downfield came back along the sideline knew exactly where he was first out of the 45 yard line gain of 10 for Moss. And now this tells Tom Brady that he's going to look for Moss because he sees the blitz the offensive line does a great job of picking it up. Look at the time that they give Tom Brady. And again, if he gets that kind of time with speed like Randy Moss on the outside, they're going to eat him up. I mean, they're going to hit him in front of him early, and then there's going to be a point pretty soon that Randy Moss is going to go deep. Ed Hawk, look at the arms on that. Oh, guy, he loves man. it too, yeah. <laughs> Can't get that shirt any tighter, can you? Ed would wear that shirt if it was 25 degrees, Full not start, 55. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty, first down. Can you believe that Ed Hockley didn't have a postseason game last year? No, I mean, it, it was shocking when I thought about it. I mean, he's, he's refereed the Super Bowl. He's regarded generally as one of the best in the league, and we would be among the consensus in, in, in that regard. Did not ref a postseason game. First and 15, here's Maroney. And he will go nowhere as he probes the left side of the San Diego defense. Ryan Bingham is there to make the stop number 97. Right, and if he continues to run that way, he's going to continue to go nowhere. I, I thought that last week he didn't really pound it in there, and, and he doesn't pound this one in here. I mean, that, that there's not a lot of cracks or creases in there, but you have to take that thing. And, and you just have to get your shoulders square and get up. Well, Sean Merriman there. I mean, that, I mean, he plays that perfectly. He usually plays on the tight end. He's very good at that. Taking that tight end block, letting the ball come to you, and then make the tackle. Second and 15 as Brady throws to the outside. That's Welker's fourth catch. What a move as he breaks away from Tim Dobbins, who's in there because Wilhelm for the moment is on the sideline being checked out. And that will be a first down. That's a move that you can make if you can go forward and then the next move is backwards. I mean that is that is something usually you know you juke a guy and you go and you, and you go right or left but when you catch a ball and then you go backwards you see that and make him dive in air and then go forward again you're going to get a first down. There's not a lot of guys that make that move. He's fortunate he wasn't penalized because what he did at the end was spike the ball, and that is a penalty this year. The pass is caught out here by Randy Moss, and Moss will pick up five. It's interesting that Randy Moss cost them a lower draft pick in a deal with Oakland than Welker did, a second rounder in a deal with Miami. Well, there was a lot of rumors about Randy Moss, and, and one is really not a good team guy, and two that maybe he has lost his speed. 
And you know, I think if he has a chance to win, he's a pretty good team guy. And I don't believe he's lost his speed. Just ask the Jets. The Patriots are doing an extra. They have an extra lineman in there now. Here's Maroney on a second and five, and that's going to be enough for a first down. At the 24. Randy when he was at Minnesota was tremendous of course from 98 through 2004 there are his numbers over that period of time second in yardage and scored 90 touchdowns the most over that period but then two years in Oakland the first of which he played for North Turner of course now coaching the San Diego Chargers two wasted years for him everybody thought well maybe as John said didn't have enough speed not a team guy but you know, so far so good in New England. I talked to him the other day and he, he is really happy. I mean he loves it here. He's closer to home and loves playing with Tom Brady. It's a gain of one speaking of Jamal Williams right there to make the tackle on Maroney. The Patriots right now have 132 yards and the Chargers have 13. And watch Jamal Williams. I mean if, if you're going to run. You're not going to run inside on him. I mean, he is the best nose tackle in football. He's the best run stopper in football. Now, that's where he didn't get a big pass rush in the middle, and that's where I think the Patriots had some success early is they had some pressure from the outside, but Brady was able to step up because there wasn't a lot of pass rush pressure. Second and nine, and the pass is caught by Moss for a touchdown. The Patriot offense has been surgical in the first quarter. Just a matter of time. Here he is inside. You see he's the inside receiver. He just runs right through the zone. It's a three deep zone. You have a corner and a safety and he just runs right between that corner and the safety. You knew that eventually they were going to go deep to Randy Moss a couple of short ones and then boom they hit him there. Chris Hansen to hold for Gostowski whose extra point is good. Brady has thrown for 140 yards the most ever for Tom in a first quarter. Randy Moss second TD of the season. New England looking very sharp. 14 nothing. Randy Moss in less than five full quarters has now caught 14 passes as a New England Patriot looks like Brady opened up a Christmas gift in September two of them for touchdowns. Well that old thing speed kills uh, you know it sure does and and it changes the defense you can play and it it opens up so many other things but you also have the Randy Moss factor. Here's Michael Turner running back the kick he's the Danny and Tomlinson's backup Out to the 31 yard line where he's tackled by Eric. Alexander against New England Ladanian Tomlinson has had some big days 141 yards per game the highest rushing yards per game versus the Patriots since 2001 five point six per carry the Charger fans though they they feel they should have gone to Tomlinson more in the second half of the the playoff game last year and that might have made the difference and I think being down 14 to nothing now they can't get away from Tomlinson but they still have to stay balanced three yard gain for Ladanian up to the 34 yard line the nose tackle in the three four will fork makes the stop you know that's one of the problems with having your best player your your running back as the score starts to separate on you you know his runs and his five yard carries and so on are going to be less effective. Laura Turner coaching his third team seven years at Washington two at Oakland second and seven Tomlinson on a delay and Ladaney will pick up the first down as he chugs through the middle out to the 42 yard line and James Sanders the safety makes the stop. I know one thing I know that, that he runs that he wants to run well you know, you know that this is a this is a big thing for him and this is just a power lead he just gets right in his behind his fullback Lorenzo Neal and you know sometimes he'll he'll look for a crease and cut off that that time he just powered it right through the hole. Now in a single back set. It's Monomaliuna going in motion. He provides the leverage, but Tomlinson gets tripped up just as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Adelis Thomas 
in on the tackle. Thomas was Mr. Everything with Baltimore, a big part of that tremendous Ravens defense. Became a free agent. And you know, it's funny how the rich sometimes get richer. Winds up with New England, who you think would be right up against the cap, but they paid him what he wanted. You're right. And as you say, New England is so rich that Adelis Thomas should really be an outside linebacker. But they have Roosevelt Coleman there, and they have Mike Vrabel there. So Adelis Thomas is playing an inside linebacker. Second down and eight. Flag goes down. You saw Belichick going down the sidelines. The line of scrimmage is the 44, and Bill to get a better angle for whatever he was looking at. Delay of game defense number 59 made a motion trying to simulate and cause a false start five yard penalty it's still second down he'll trot it down the sidelines about 13 yards to get a better peak but it turns out to be Roosevelt Colvin who gets penalized here I think every time every time you see them do something or they or they they flinch or they they make someone move or Bill Belichick runs down in the sideline starts moving around. You're always going to think what are they doing. This has to be illegal. They can't do that. <laughs> someone told me last night that this is hammer the hoodie week. Tomlinson for a first down. There's no question that Belichick has taken a tremendous hit this week. And the Patriots, and of course, you know, you love to shoot at the, at, the, at the the top dog, and they've done so well. But there's no question that the image of New England and the Patriots were thought of as one of the model franchises because of what they've done in the Bob Kraft area. But that that image has taken a whack this week. There's no question about right, that. Right, and they're trying to get that competitive advantage. And you know, like we talked about earlier, is you know, does this affect the team? You know, there's a is this a distraction for the team and I think in this first half it's it's answered this is not a distraction to the New England Patriots there is Bob Kraft and we'll talk to Bob at halftime as he addresses what took place this week meanwhile we've got an injured Patriot I can't identify him just yet it's Adelis Thomas. Around the league today, of course, Bob and the gang with everything at halftime for you as Thomas comes off the field. Junior Seau goes in to replace him, the longtime charger, and there's no running room there for Tomlinson because Seau was there to push him out of bounds of the Houston Texans. We saw the Texans in, in preseason on film, and I tell you, they're pretty good. Thomas came back into the game, and the pass is caught. Along the left sideline by Vincent Jackson. The Chargers have big outside receivers. Jackson is 6'5. Malcolm Floyd is 6'5. Kasim Osgood, mainly a special teams guy, but does play a little bit of offense, also 6'5. And Gates is 6'4. I think this is the best pass that Phillip Rivers throws is the out. I mean, he feels real comfortable here. A little play action pass, get back, get set, and throws it perfectly. I thought that same week, you know, last week against the Chicago Bears, he did that three or four times. You have Tomlinson and Turner both in the backfield together, and Rivers is going to get hit and lose the ball. Roosevelt Colvin, who had the earlier pick, forces the interception, and it's recovered by New England. Rosie Colvin having a big, big night. Remember, he got that interception, and you thought he was going to rush. This time, he does rush. Vince Wilfork with the recovery. You're going to see Colvin here against Montemaliuna right here, and he just gets his hands on him and then just pulls him to one side and goes around. Good pass rush. I mean, all good pass rushers have good hands and use their hands well. Brandon Montemaliuna is the second tight end for the Chargers, but is a very good pass protector. He's like having an extra offensive lineman in there. Now at the 44 after the second turnover. First and 10, half minute to go in the opening period. Brady play fake throws, and that's about an eight yard gain for Dante Stallworth, another newcomer. Let's go to Andrea. Yeah, well, right tackle Shane Olivier for the Chargers. We saw him carted off. He was lying flat on his back. He has a lower back injury. They took him in for further evaluation, and he is questionable for his return. As for linebacker Matt Wilhelm, he walked off with a what they're calling a calf injury. Uh, he had the same injury actually in the preseason, and he again is in the locker room for further evaluation. Thank you, Andrew. We'll let the clock run down. 
So with forward progress, got him enough for the first down. What a quarter for the Patriots. What tumult. 14 nothing New England after one. Sunday night back after these messages. I admire Tom's leadership. Uh, I can see how he took control of the offense, how he was a student of the game, how he uh, could help everybody on the field get better. He knows exactly what we're doing, and he gets us going in the right direction on every play. So, you know, he's just a smart football player. The guys talking about Brady. We come back to Foxborough. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer, 14 0 New England. New England has the ball to start the period. It is first and ten. Sammy Morris is the running back. He gets his first carry, and the former Bill and Dolphin, who backs up Lawrence Maroney, takes it to the 39 yard line where Quentin Jammer makes the tackle after a gain of six. You know, when I was talking to Randy Moss the other day, he said that was the thing that really amazed him about Tom Brady. He said how smart he was and, and how hard he studied and how hard he worked. He yeah. said he's always been one of the first guys here, last to leave. He's He's in the weight room and he said, you know something? He's always sweating. He always has sweat on. <laughs> he looks too cool to sweat. And second and five, this is Sammy Morris picking up two to the 38-yard line. Tackled there by Jamal Williams. You know, a lot of times we just think that this stuff comes naturally. You know, you say, look at Tom Brady, how smooth he is, how great he is. He looks like silk, but he works very, very hard at being that. I know that. You know he's not a big guy and he was never a strong guy and he's really had to work you know, building up his legs and his strength and his body and you know, he's done that. He's done everything else too. Same in almost every sport. Look at Tiger Woods. Well, the best always work the hardest don't they? Yeah. Third down and three. Brady under pressure throws and the pass the Chargers say is no good and the officials concur. Intended for Stallworth as a penalty. Back at the 46 yard line. Ed Hockley. Foul roughing the passer. Defense. Number 54. Helmet. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Inside linebacker Stephen Cooper taking Donnie Edwards' old spot. Went to the helmet and thus the flag. I think he had two things, didn't he? The, the ball is gone. It's a late hit. And then it's a helmet. Like he got a couple of helmets. He got a helmet to the face and he got a helmet to the back of the head. Right there, yeah. yeah. I mean it. it's a late hit, and I don't know that it's helmet to helmet as much it as much as it was left hand to helmet. In any case, it was a late hit and it should have been called and was. Edwards gone. It's really Wilhelm who takes that exact spot. But Cooper on the inside of the two great outside backers, the two Shawns and Phillips and Merriman, first and ten at the 24-yard line. Five man rush and this time Brady gets sacked and the ball is loose. But Tom is able to cover up as Sean Merriman comes around the corner as he does so often 17 sacks last year despite being suspended for four games for violating the substance abuse policy. Right and, and he went for the strip to Ron Rivera the guy from the Chicago Bear who's now coaching the linebackers here at at San Diego really teaches that you know to come around and and always go for the ball. I mean you go for the sack but always go for the ball. It was all started by Lawrence Taylor and Lawrence Taylor of course was Sean Merriman's idol and that's why he wears number 56 and to this day watches film of Lawrence Taylor. Second and 16. Short drop by Brady. Quick toss to Moss. And Moss got inside position on Quentin Jammer. And that will be close to a first down. It's a 14 yard gain, setting up a third and two. And Jammer saying, What the heck do I have to do? Watch him. Jammer is playing an outside technique. So, so Randy Moss comes off the line, bends into him a little just to hold him, and then runs a slam. Just a little three step drop, almost impossible to cover. Yeah, that's why I always said that he looked like Joe Montana. I mean, Joe Montana did the same thing that all the other quarterbacks in football did, but he just made it look a lot easier. And that's what Tom Brady does. Third and two, and Brady couldn't get the playoff before the play clock expired. Calls a timeout. New England on the move again, already up by two touchdowns in Foxborough. 
Andy's fit in, you know, from day one. He's he's come in, uh, worked hard through the whole offseason program like everybody else. Randy Moss is, is a talented receiver, uh, physically and mentally. Um, but as a Patriot, he fits in because he wants to win. So far, so good. Randy Moss, nine catches last week, six tonight. A touchdown in each of the games. Picked up 14 on the last play before the timeout. Third and two now at the 15-yard line. Sammy Morris is the running back. And Brady's going to keep it himself. And we'll see when they unpile how close he is, very close to a first down. Yeah, the reason he did that is it was a short yardage situation, but the Chargers were in dime defense or six defensive backs, and there's no one over the center, so Tom Brady's just going to take it. Look at that. There's six defensive backs. There's no one in the middle, so that was kind of a gimme first down for Brady. And Jamal Williams, in the meantime, was on the bench as well as they were looking at him. Now they go no huddle from the 13-yard line. And Sammy Morris, four years at Buffalo, three years at Miami, tackled by Stephen Cooper, the inside backer. You know, the, one of the reasons that the Patriots picked up Randy Moss is that you know Bill Belichick always always loved him. You know, thought that he was a great player, and and defensive coaches are always afraid to speak. You know, you say, you know, what scares any defensive coach, any defensive guy, any coordinator more than anything? It's a wide receiver with speed. Second and eight, he's one on one at the bottom against Jammer. There's that safety over the top, though. Brady looks over the middle, throws. That's caught by Jabbar Gaffney, who caught 10 passes in the playoff game last year at San Diego. He's tackled by the rookie out of Utah, Eric Weddle. Third down. You know, and that's what Randy Moss does. And when we talked about Jammer being out there, but that safety is out there with him, too. If you look, both these guys out here go out there because of Randy Moss, and that will open things up in the middle and on the other side. There's Morris on third and two, and that's a big stop for the Chargers. As Sean Merriman is there to make sure there's no advance. And Sean Merriman uh, getting booed by the crowd. Didn't do his sack dance there, but that was the dance that was being mimicked at the end of last year's game, creating the bad blood between the teams. Well, Sean Merriman is going to make the play like that because they don't block him. And even though he's out outside, and we talk about Lawrence Taylor, and when when Lawrence Taylor lined up in that position outside, even though you were going in the middle, you had to block him. When you go in the middle, you have to block Sean Merriman. Here's Kostowski's 24-yard field goal attempt that splits the upright. Brady leads him down the field for three more. 17 to nothing, Patriots. A little lesson here on what's legal and illegal in light of what's happened this week. There's a coach's camera at the 50 yard line, upper left. In the end zone, upper right. There's Belichick, of course, at the bottom. Those cameras are legal. Nothing wrong with shooting from those angles. And after the kickoff, we'll get to what the Patriots did last week. Which led to the penalties as Gostowski sends this kick down to the 10 yard line. This is Darren Sproles who suffered a concussion on the opening kickoff last week who gets banged down by Eric Alexander. So what did the Patriots do last week. Where was the camera located. We're going to recreate it for you. And there is where the camera was behind the Patriot bench focused on the jet defensive coaches. Right, and what they were doing is they would they would take a picture of the defenses being signaled in, then they would pan up to the uh, uh, time and and score and and down and distance on the scoreboard. So they had the two things: they had the signal, and then they had the scoreboard. Then you would marry that with the play from the 30-yard line. This is Tomlinson. There's a flag. As the Danian gets bumped out of bounds, you know, John, as a coach, and I heard I heard Jimmy Johnson say today that you know he'd heard about that a bunch of years ago from a Kansas City scout, and it really it wasn't worth anything to him. I mean, what do you think as a, as a Hall of Fame coach? Is it well, what, what's it worth? It wasn't worth anything to me either because I didn't like to be distracted. Because here's the thing: is offensively, the, the there was the no foul on the play. It was not a hold. The, the defender was just overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> the defender was overpowered so much it looked like a hole. 
But what I was saying is is you have to call the play to the quarterback before the defense is called. So even if you know what the defense is going to be you don't know it before you call it. So so you call your play you go up to the line of scrimmage like right now and then you signal in to the quarterback right now and you tell him you know you know, no blitz or cover two or cover three or whatever you can just get those signals to him. This is a swing to Tomlinson on the second and seven and Tomlinson cuts inside of Junior Seau who makes the tackle a little bit short of the first down tackled there by number 98 Chad Brown. Now this is the other thing that is legal. This is the still photos and what you do is you you take two pictures of the defense. You take the picture right at the snap and right after the snap. So you see one how they're aligned and then you catch their first movement and that's what the coaches study on the sideline or show the players on the sideline. Third and one where they normally excel last year they were 24 out of 25 on third and fourth or one mainly because of Tomlinson but he is stopped that time by Santonio Thomas number 92. So the crowd rose as one before a third and short and now it's fourth down and Norv Turner sends the punting group out. You're going to see it right over here. The, the tight end doesn't get any movement over there. It was down here on this side. Doesn't get any movement there, and there's no place for Tomlinson to run. Cypher is to punt. Wes Walker will run it back. Walker started to call for the fair catch, lets it bounce, and it goes into the end zone. So out to the 20 they'll come a little scuffle ensues after the play but no flag is thrown Brady begins at the 20 yard line 807 to go to the half 17 nothing Patriots. We just saw the promo and there he is Zach Levi the star Chuck here at the game tonight and premieres next Monday night on NBC. Zach has to show a little more excitement. Yeah, well, during the Maybe commercial. He's a Charger fan. <laughs> Chargers. It's hard to get excited about the Chargers right now. No, not to this point. It's with all Patriots. And this is Sean Merriman coming in for the sack. So Merriman made a big play defensively on a third down play on the last series. And the crowd gives Merriman. His own Bronx cheer back at the 10 yard line with a sack. It'll be second down and 20. You know, Sean Merriman was saying last night that they're moving him around more. And you see, this time he starts as a linebacker on the left side, strong side linebacker, and then he stunts to the inside. The inside linebacker goes, and then he comes right in behind him. I'm sure that's one that the Patriots weren't ready for. Second and 20 now at the 10 yard line. Your defense has to get a turnover. And that's bobbled and incomplete. The coverage was good. The pass intended for the tight end, Ben Watson, covered by the strong safety, Clinton Hart. You know, Norv Turner was saying last night, he said, if our secondary plays well, our defense will play well. And I think his secondary in the in the first half here has gotten torched pretty good. And a big part of that is Randy Moss. Third down and 20. Jammer has his hands full. Covering Moss. Now Falk splits to the outside, sending Weddle to cover Moss in the slot. And Brady throws underneath and it's caught at the 15 yard line. And out to the 22 goes Benjamin Watson. So they needed 20 and they got about 13. And the Chargers with a defensive stop, creating the punt. They're telling us these are NFL frequency coordinators monitoring the frequencies tonight behind the Patriot bench. I can't imagine there would be any shenanigans tonight. I can't imagine. I don't think there will be any shenanigans the rest of the year. I agree with you. This is Darren Sproles with a flag thrown early and then late at the end of the play. You know, Darren Sproles had a concussion last week and the new concussion rule the the doctors have to say that he can go back in he wanted to go back in thought he was OK told North Turner he was OK and the doctor said no so Sproles couldn't play the rest of the game and 
I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that a player will always tell you that he's OK. And as a coach the guy says he's OK well then heck go on in there. But now it has to be the player saying he's OK. The coach saying he's OK but the most important guy is the doctor has to say he's OK. Sproles got hurt last week on the first play of the season. There were two fouls by the receiving team on the on the play. Both of them were illegal blocks in the back. Number 52 is declined. Number 28 is enforced 10 yards from the spot where the receiver caught the kick. 10 yards first down. Carlos Polk and Steve Gregory 653 to go to the half. San Diego with the ball and in need of getting something going 17 nothing. Bob Kraft has owned this team since the mid 90s. He's seen his franchise go to four Super Bowls. But of course a tumultuous week. We'll talk to him at halftime. First and 10 San Diego from the 32 yard line. And Rivers throws and that's caught. He finds the open man and that's Vincent Jackson to the 46 yard line. A couple of things we should mention about the New England defense. Richard Seymour on the physically unable to perform list. Knee won't come back to the least a six week. Rodney Harrison the strong safety on the suspended list gone for four games. This is the second. You know, I don't think Philip Rivers has gotten into any rhythm not only in this game but in this season. You know, he looked like he was anxious and antsy last week and he really hasn't been I mean he completed that pass but he was a little behind the receiver. And he really hasn't gotten into any groove or rhythm yet. Trying to hear and the coverage is very good as Ellis Hodge is right there hitting Buster Davis just as the ball got there. You know and that's that's the thing that they have to do. I mean you always talk about you know LaDainian Tomlinson and Antonio Gates but that's not enough and North Turner knows that and he has to get a wide receiver. I mean, his number one draft choice is Buster Davis then you have to use him. He has to become a threat. They need to find a threat on the outside. Their number one wide out last year Eric Parker out with a toe injury. Second down and 10 from the 46 yard line. Aaron snap Rivers recovers throws Gates makes the catch inside the 40 and that's going to set up a third and short Wilson and Seau in on the tackle with under six minutes to go in the second quarter. You know and Gates is such a, a great tight end I don't even know that you'd call him a tight end because he moves around so much but but he's great at this option stuff if you watch him here he comes up and then you know he sees coverage on the inside he sees Junior Seau on the inside so he just does a pivot and goes to the outside and he and he and Rivers were on the same page on that one third down and one from the 37 yard line and Rivers throws and it is intercepted. That's a Dalis Thomas and Thomas is out in front and the Chargers get it from behind. No they cannot. Touchdown New England. Sixty five yard run back. On a third and one. That's the thing that these Patriots do so well is they show you something and then they run fast to get out there to take it away. They just don't saunter out there or slide out there. They get out there quickly. And that's what a Davis Thomas did on that one. Kostowski for the extra point. Thomas makes a lot of big plays. A defensive player who has now scored six career touchdowns. That's his third on an interception run back. But I mean, they practice this stuff. Here's the Dallas Thomas right here. You know, we said he's a little uncomfortable inside, but he's very comfortable here. You see, I mean, he starts and he just doesn't get back in the middle. He starts at an angle and gets that angle that Rivers can't complete the ball. You see. He goes out there and he has that angle where where he's between Rivers and the receiver and they take away great angles and that's one thing about a Bill Belichick coach defense they show you something and then they get to parts where you're not ready for them you don't expect them and they get the interception. The Patriots tonight have been picture perfect pardon the expression. 
Well, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, they can they can talk about him, but Bill Belichick can coach some football. I mean, you can't take that away. I mean, you just watch the way he coaches, the way they practice, and and they they kind of bait you into things like that, and then boom, they take it away and intercept it. He kept saying last week because he was stonewalling the issue. He kept saying, "We're moving on. We're moving on. We're thinking about San Diego." And they were. I mean, they did oh, yeah. move on, and they did think yes. about San Diego, and they practiced about San Diego, and, and they came out here in this first half and played like they were ready for San Diego. That's a short kick and a fair catch called for by Jacques Cesar. So 24 nothing. Back comes the offense. Sunday night football is being brought to you by Walt Disney Pictures. New comedy, The Game Plan, in theaters September 28th. By eBay, shop victoriously. By Samsung, the official HD TV of the NFL, and by Toyota. Watch Toyota's line of scrimmage Sunday nights on NBC. Aerial coverage tonight being brought to you by Gillette Deodorant. That's Boston. Speaking of Gillette, back to Gillette Stadium we come in Foxborough. Brady, 16 out of 20 for 184. Rivers, 5 of 9, two picks, 61 yards. 517 to go to the half. The Chargers are going to have to pull off something they did last year when they were down by 21 at Cincinnati and 17 at Denver in back to back weeks and won the game. This is going to be even tougher than either of those. Right. And North Turner hasn't figured out this defense and his quarterback has no idea what they're doing. From the 28 yard line. Here's Tomlinson. And Tomlinson takes it up to the 39 yard line. Mike Goff helped to lead the way in the Danians' biggest burst of the night. Right. And that's the stuff that North Turner thought they'd be able to do is he said last night that you know that the Danian has to be able to hit those creases. We think we can get the creases on him. There's a crease right there. The Danian Tomlinson did get the crease. Of course, he didn't expect to be down 24 to nothing in the first half. From the 39-yard line. And they will not go away from the running game. And why should you when you have Tomlinson up to the 42-yard line? I think right now, just to get some rhythm, just to get some balance in this thing just to get back that the Chargers have to think right now get some first downs you'll get two or three first downs get a score here before halftime and then go in regroup and come out and take it to them in the second half but they, they haven't been able to do any of those things yet and they will get the second half kickoff Michael Turner is the running back here on second down and seven they give it to Turner who averaged over six yards per carry last season up to the 45 he goes setting up a third down and four North Turner wound up getting a team with so much talent after seven years in Washington two years with the Oakland Raiders last year at San Francisco as the offensive coordinator and San Diego of course knew all about him because he helped to install this offense back in 2001 and I think they wanted continuity so they lost Cam Cameron he went to Miami but Cam Cameron was coaching North's offense so they brought North back third down and four up at the 45 yard line Rivers under pressure throws it's caught by Turner but a great tackle was made by Sanders Rivers getting jostled the, the pressure was intense enough that he had a check down and then Sanders came up to make sure they didn't convert that's the thing you have to put the pressure on and Ty Warren was there Mike Vrabel was there and you know you don't like to see the quarterback throw a check down on third down but Philip Rivers had to on that down or he's going to take a sack. We saw Philip Rivers down here Al, throw his helmet before he sat down. He is very, very frustrated. Someone has to get him under control. Cypher's punt. They're going to the end zone. As you said last night, John, after talking to the Chargers, they seem unusually confident. Now, of course, it's a different story. Norv Turner inheriting a great team. The coaches to inherit teams the best record. In the league, he had Nick Scorich replacing the retiring Buck Shaw, and then John replaced John Roush back in 1969 after the Raiders had gone 12 and 2. 
Jimmy Johnson won a Super Bowl and then Barry Switzer came in in 94 and Barry would go on to win his Super Bowl in 1995. I tell you that's a heck of a lot better doing it that way than doing the opposite but when you take over a team like North Turner as was 14 2 the year before there's a lot of pressure on you to, to win every game and they haven't looked good this year at all from the 20 yard line here's Maroney up to the 25 yard line A.J. Smith the general manager of the team who was John Butler's chief aide and he succeeded Butler after John died a few years ago and he's drafted tremendously I mean, remember they had Drew Brees he had to decide whether to go with Brees or go with Rivers who they were able to pick up in the Eli Manning trade when they drafted Manning and Eli did not want to go to San Diego so he's really done a great personnel job he and Schottenheimer were at at loggerheads and finally he had to make the move last year he brings in Turner and right now they got a lot of stuff to worry about at least tonight because it's been all New England they've been razor sharp at Gillette 24 to nothing two minute warning. The Toyota halftime show coming up Robert Kraft the owner of the Patriots will talk about the week Bob Costas talked to Roger Goodell before the game reaction to that a look at the day's best in the NFL coming up at the half on the Toyota halftime show two minutes to the half second down and five New England at the 25 yard line. It's Kelly Washington in motion. Here's Maroney trying to cut it back and does successfully and he'll get run down but not really picks up about 11 Eric Weddle and Marlon McCree are there first down for New England a little barking going on and the Chargers better stop barking and start tackling because you know what happens here the the Patriots are getting close to midfield and I know how they think and I know how Tom Brady thinks it getting close here to a, a play action pass and go deep to Randy Moss now maybe they're going to try and get a first down first but this is where once they get around midfield they go after you they go after you deep Brady will take a timeout New England has one remaining all New England so far tonight Brady after the opening kickoff was six or seven on the opening drive he's thrown for two touchdowns tonight Philip Rivers meanwhile has had two picks one returned by a Dalis Thomas for a touchdown and Tomlinson tonight with 10 rushes for 35 yards and there is Thomas's run back for a 65 yard interception touchdown and thus it's 24 to nothing as we approach the half. Now you watch the Davis Thomas and he's he's so big and so strong and then he can run that fast. I mean some of those guys should be illegal. This is a big part of that. Baltimore defense along with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed as Brady throws after the timeout and that's caught by Falk. He's tackled up at the 45 yard line. Pats have one timeout. Weddle makes the tackle. It'll be second down and one. Hey, ben Watson better get lined up. He's in the slot to the right. Tom Brady was talking to him right here. Tell them who to block. <laughs> They're having a discussion there. Second and one. Brady in the pocket. Brady going deep, and that pass is not caught, but there's a flag as Dante Stallworth and Antonio Cromartie were one on one. And the flag is going to be on Cromartie. You know, you just know that's coming up. I mean, you know, they get to midfield and they're going to take a deep shot. Pass interference, defense number 20. It was an arm bar. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Here is, you see what the arm bar is, is you, is you can't put the arm inside. See the left arm right here? That's what he's calling the arm bar, that the left arm is in there and stopping the receiver from running deeper. Now I'm not sure about that. I mean that that looked like a pretty good defensive play. And Hockey was at 20. It was 31. He was talking about Paul Marty. 47 seconds to the half. He had a double dip mistake on that one. Yeah. 
And there Brady is. going deep again, and this time for Stallworth, and the pass is incomplete. So you had a replay right there, and it will be second down and ten. Because you got on that side of the 50. I mean, he'll throw short, he'll dink, he'll dunk, he'll he'll run the ball, and then when he gets here, he's going to go after you deep. That's how he gets everyone set here. <laughs> he has to identify the mic. He started his count and he had to go back to identify the mic. I mean, he is so calm doing that. Manning like. Falk to the 27 yard line. I think he's calmer than Peyton Manning. I mean, Peyton Manning, you know, you see him do that, stop his cadence, you know, start a new cadence, move a guy around, identify the mic. And he kind of makes you nervous. You know, like you just like three, three pots of coffee. <laughs> a little less frenetic. And third and six. That pass is intercepted. And it's picked off by Clinton Hart on a deflection. And Hart will take it back to the 30 yard line. So San Diego already down by 24, at least able to keep New England from increasing its advantage. So Brady guiding him down the field, getting the Call on the pass interference, then trying to go deep with Stallworth has this one intercepted. We threw it behind him here. Here he starts on the end, and instead of leading him in, he put it on his back shoulder. I mean, this is a bad throw by Tom Brady. I mean, he has to lead him in and across and in front of that safety. Did you see what he did after that, though? He went over and looked at the ball. <laughs> You're like, hey, that wasn't that to be something wrong with that football. Weird shape. And the half will end on a Tomlinson one yard carry. So that will do it. The New England Patriots looking super. 24 0. Halftime show. Coming up, the first these messages from your local NBC station.